Hello stormwater designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions instructional videos. It's more hydrology education videos and in this lesson we're going to go over precipitation, how it's measured, and some of the various forms precipitation can uh, can be in. So that's what we're going to go over in this one. Um, you can download our ultimate hydrology guide which uh, explains all the different kinds of hydrology, how we calculate peak flows, and uh, different stormwater methods. You can click that link down below and you can download that guide for 100% guide for free. If you want to learn more about hydrology. So Clear Creek Solutions it was founded in 2005. We do software development, hydrology solutions, modeling, and education. There's over 60 plus years of experience between the senior members. We helped develop WWHM 2012 for the counties of Western Washington as well as numerous software packages along the West Coast and the entire country. Okay, so let's talk about precipitation. So what is precipitation? Precipitation includes all water that falls from the atmosphere to the surface. So remember we went over the hydrologic cycle, um, how water can be evaporated from large water bodies or evapotranspirated from a certain vegetation. It's then back in the atmosphere and then it'll fall as precipitation. So what's classified as precipitation is all that water that falls from the atmosphere. And precipitation can come in a variety of forms. And mostly hydrologists are interested in liquid versus frozen form of precipitation. Um, someone who's more is able to study the weather, a climatologist might be interested in other kinds of precipitation. But for hydrologists, we're mostly interested in that liquid versus frozen comparison. Rainfall runs off to the stream after it reaches the ground and often causes most floods. Not necessarily the frozen form, but the rainfall form will. So melted snow rarely causes floods, but can when combined with rainfall. So it's going to be mostly those large rainfall events that cause floods. Not always melted snow, but... Uh, with some melted snow and additional runoff and additional flow, it, it can cause floods when it's combined with that rainfall. And snow are large reservoirs that contain water that can be used later. So when it snows on a mountain or a high elevation area and it stays there and the ice stays in that certain form, that water can actually be saved for later in the spring or summer times when it finally melts and there's now a fresh water source for that local community. Spring will melt the snow when it is required for irrigation of certain farm practices and uh, other aspects. Now let's talk about fog, drip, and dew. So fog consists of water droplets that are so small that their fall velocities are essentially negligible. And fog particles that contact vegetation may coalesce with other droplets, and then this will form a drop that will be large enough to fall to the ground. So these fog particles are so small, they're so light, that they're not really falling. As you can kind of visually see fog, it doesn't look like it's falling as precipitation, it's just sort of existing in the atmosphere. Um, but when it's able to coalesce with other droplets, it'll finally be large enough to fall to the ground. And then the co condensation of the water vapor may result in dew. So this fog drip is deposited, will not contribute to stream flow or groundwater. So it's not really going to contribute a whole lot uh, volume wise to the stream flow or groundwater, but it may be used as a water source uh, that can be used locally. And plants with effective dew collecting uh, can grow in regions with low moisture. So if there's an area that doesn't get a lot of rainfall, but they're able to collect a lot of dew and uh, fog drip, that can be used as a moisture or water source. So let's talk a little bit about precipitation measurement. Precipitation is expressed as the depth in inches or millimeters that falls on a level surface. So if you think about rain falling on any surface, we're just going to measure in inches or millimeters from a certain level. This may be me measured as the depth of water deposited in an open level sided container. Standard gauges in the United States use an eight inch funnel that discharges in a tube roughly two and a half inches. The area of the inner tube is 10% of that of the funnel and a stick graduating in inches and tenths can be used to measure the rainfall and precipitation. So precipitation in excess of two inches in this situation overtops the tube and collects in the overflow can for additional measurement. Large storage gauges can be used to catch and store precipitation for periods all the way up to a month. Wind air currents around gauges can cause them to catch less precipitation than they sh should. So a common problem is because of the wind that is blowing uh, this rainfall, um, you may have wildly different results between different gauges uh, depending on the amount of wind because it'll sort of knock the water around. So that will cause a bit of an error in the measurements and low fall velocity of snowflakes may exaggerate this effect because a slow a slow falling snowflake will easily get blown by the wind and may affect how much precipitation is actually occurring in that area. So catch may vary from 0 to 50% more depending on the type of gauge, local wind velocity, and terrain. And if you think about a software package that we use, WWHM 2012, 
there is a rain gauge that encompasses a large portion of a land use area but we also have a rain gauge factor for that area depending on where, where you click on our map so we take into account elevation wind and other uh, factors there to make sure you get the the correct rainfall data the U.S. National Weather Service may use shields consisting of metal slats pivoted about a circular ring to help catch the appropriate amount of rainwater, and the slats are about two inches above the top of the gauge. So that is our review of precipitation. Few and uh, that is our review of precipitation, fog, and dew. And in the next lesson, we're going to go over what kinds of rain gauges exist and how they measure different rainfalls. So like I said, you can download our free hydrology guide down below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.